ok. So, so basically yeah this is a production problem uh, it happens. So, basically uh, today what I am going to discuss about um, how you can scale your Kubernetes um, in, in a serverless mode, how you can implement it and I will do a demo of that as well. And when I say serverless it means that um, how you can you know scale your applications and into an infinite mode there is a lot of traffic coming into your system how you can scale your applications and also scale down pretty fast right. So, that is how serverless is all about and how you can implement that serverless into your Kubernetes ok. So, that will be my first part and uh, I am going to talk about some of the use cases of uh, virtual kubelets. So, uh, basically the how you can extend the Kubernetes workloads uh, to to different services like one of the services is IOT edge computing deployments ok. So, um, so about me I have worked in bunch of uh, companies um, I was at IBM so I was a software developer there and I did some of the solution in architecting at HCL and worked in Blackbird had my own startup and I was also a senior developer advocate for DigitalOcean and now currently working with Microsoft Azure as a senior product marketing manager and that is the picture you know most of you know previously when I used to go for an interview people used to ask I would are you hands on on production right. So, that is the picture I usually show them I was really hands on and I was pulling the wires right. So, yeah cool. So, the basic of uh, you know virtual kubelets even before I get deep dive into virtual kubelets I just want to introduce to you you know how exactly communities work. How many of you know how exactly communities work? Come on guys there were bunch of talks on communities ok. So, this is a and I will just introduce you how exactly communities work. So, there is a controller. So, if you see the controller uh, you as a user you submit a state. So, you design a YAML file you as a user defined states and you define it and you submit it to the uh, API server of Kubernetes which is on the master and and there is obviously a scheduler and a control manager which actually uh, does the uh, scheduling of the uh, pods which you have submitted and this is the worker nodes and through kubelets uh, the API server connects to the kubelets and it actually schedules those pods and container gets kicked in and there is a queue proxy and other stuff and and that is how you can access the uh, your applications uh, in, in in the virtual node in the in the virtual world right. So, you put up the complete applications into the uh, you know in, in these nodes and you can access the application through these nodes right. So, this is how a community works and I say very simple uh, most of you know uh, how exactly it is working. So, um, take a look at the kubelet. So, the kubelet job is to implement the pods and you know it also manages the container operations. So, that is the uh, job of the kubelet right. So, imagine um, there are certain things which it does these are the things which uh, a kubelet has its in function uh, capability that is it creates a pod, it updates the pod, it deletes pods and it also does some container operations like pulling images and other things with containers. So, basically this is the kubelet functionality ok. So, if you virtualize this kubelet functionality what what is the capabilities you can think of right. So, let us uh, let us see this uh, this is where the Kubernetes APIs are which is the master and you have certain nodes and you know uh, basically what is a virtual kubelet you have nodes and it acts as a one of the node. So, basically virtual kubelet registers itself as a node. So, imagine you have uh, certain nodes and you have a traffic coming to your system and there is pods being created into these uh, kubelets and you uh, know uh, you need to uh, scale at this point where there is lot of traffic onto your system and you need to scale at this point and this scaling will happen with the virtual kubelet. So, you are also uh, horizontally pod scaler you are using horizontal pod scalers here and you are also using um, 
uh, container uh, at the back end. So you're not ac ac creating a new node, but you are actually in, you know, uh, connecting a, a container instance service, which you can, uh, you know, which you, where you can deploy these pods and containers onto the virtual kubelets. So what exactly happens on uh, virtual kubelets? It's basically implementing the pod. That means there is a pod description which you have created and you have added onto the kubelets. And this is actually uh, deployed to the virtual uh, kubelet and there is a, a container operations which has been taken care at the kubelet level. And not all operations of kubelet is available on virtual kubelets. Okay? So there is, um, it does certain operations that is the creating a pod, updating a pod and you know pods, you know getting the pod status and you know uh, doing some of the operations of the pod. But not all the operations of a kubelet is available on the virtual kubelet. So let's take an example, okay. So um, you have deployed a microservice application in a cluster, in a Kubernetes cluster and you have certain microservices and on, from these microservices needs to be scaled and there's a lot of traffic which is coming to this um, microservices and you need to scale this, right? So you, what, what is the action you take today is you go ahead and create new servers, new nodes and attach these nodes to the Kubernetes and then, uh, you know, the pods gets created onto the new nodes and that's how you scale or you scale through pods horizontal pods, that is just scaling the pods, uh, creating on these uh, nodes which you already have. But at the end of the day, if that is also not enough, you have to scale the, um, you know, the uh, pods, uh, the nodes itself, right? So the, the, the scaling of nodes, you know, it takes a lot of uh, effort, right? It's a, it, it takes time and it's costly, it's over provisioning also, right? So if you want to scale only 10 pods and you don't have a space in your existing nodes, you have to create some extra nodes for that and it's a cost for you, right? So to solve this problem, so there is a virtual kubelet was introduced. So virtual node and virtual, virtual node is uh, Azure implementation of virtual kubelets, but virtual kubelets was introduced here and there, it's a connector. So basically it's Azure uh, container instance, but so it's basically I'm using Azure, but you can use it your own way. You can create your own uh, provider for this and you can use it uh, in your own implementation and in your own clusters. You can install it on your own clusters. So um, when, the, when the scale is happening, right, the pods gets created in the uh, container uh, instances. So you are just connect, creating a connector. So let me go back to the previous slide where this is the one, it gets registered, the virtual kubelet gets registered as a node and when the scale is happening, the pods gets, uses this virtual kubelet as a connector to, you know, connect to the container services, okay? So this is how it exactly working and that's how you build a serverless in, into your uh, Kubernetes, right? So there is, um, you know, traffic, the traffic is, has to be managed and you know it to manage the cost. There is a, you know, you, you add that pods onto the container instance and it creates, and it's an infinite number of pods you can create, okay? Infinite number of pods. That means your application is always scaling and your application is never down, okay? So that's the, that's the uh, virtual kubelets introduction to virtual kubelets, okay? This is how it exactly scales. So it's a basically a open source project. It is nothing but, um, you know, um, API, you know, a Kubernetes API for a serverless container uh, platform. So you're just building a Kubernetes, you have a Kubernetes cluster and you're building a serverless uh, instance for that, uh, you know, uh, for that cluster. It's a CNCF project as well. So it's, it's not with Microsoft anymore. So it's also been uh, handed over to the CNCF. So CNCF is managing this project. Okay, so as of today, uh, I showed you the previous slide. There were certain operations which um, Kubelet had, right? There were certain operations uh, Kubelet was uh, managing. And as of today, this is, this is the snapshot of what virtual Kubelets can manage. Not everything which was available, uh, which is available on the uh, Kubelets is available in the virtual Kubelets, okay? There are certain functions it can't 
handle okay so some of the use cases as i told you one of the use cases is always uh, worst scenarios where there's a lot of traffic you create a connector and you you know uh, just spin up pods in in the container instances so you are still ma you know your application is always on your application is always running and you can uh, manage the scale of your application and you're paying for consumption and once the traffic is down it gets deleted so it's it's like you're only paying for the consumption and it's uh, it's pretty scalable it starts within seconds so you don't have to wait for the nodes to come up and other things okay so this is the example um, of the iot edge deployment so this is a simple example of how you can use uh, virtual nodes into your iot edge system that is say for example i want to start a car through mobile phone and uh, i have deployed some of the uh, iot systems at the my car where i want to connect to that and the, it's running a container instance and i want to run some uh, pod on that uh, iot edge level right so that's that's the use cases and it, you can think about a lot of use cases with virtual kubelets so there is so many use cases coming out through uh, through innovations in various areas okay so you can um, as i told you right you can extend this virtual kubelet into various services so you just have a kubernetes you can connect to different different uh, service providers you can connect to different services which is there you can connect to your own iot service you can connect to uh, different uh, you can just do a click to order pizzas and other stuff right so there is lot lot more innovation coming in these areas okay so let me do a demo you will understand how exactly it works so how exactly uh, the burst scenario which i talked about uh, let let me go through this demo Okay, so I have uh, set up a website. So it's all running on Kubernetes as of now, and this is a simple uh, website which has some uh, some products to buy. Okay, so you want to buy these products, and there is you did a marketing campaign, and there is a lot of traffic coming to your site today. And how do you do that? And so uh, how uh, how you can see the you know how we can scale. Kubernetes applications uh, using the virtual kubelet. That's what I'm going to show you a demo. Okay, so here you can see there is no containers. This is the container instance of Azure. There is no containers available as of now. So there is no containers has been created. So when I do a burst to this particular server, there's some internet issue. So you can see there is a virtual node which has been attached. Okay, I've already set up the service so that I can do the demo. So there is, you can see there's some issue with my network. Okay, so we will do this. Um, Let me show you all the pods which is running. Oops. So these are the pods which is running, and let me run a go script. Let's 
A I don't know what's wrong with my internet. Just not creating. Okay. I've just started to create some Oops, this is going to get closed. Wow. Why? Okay, I hope it runs. No? Yeah, that's the only. It's okay. I have the video. I can show you the uh, video. Oh, I don't have the video. Ampersand is not working. Oh, I missed the source. Hopefully. Okay, so where we are, here, um, I'm logging into another terminal and I'm just showing you what happens with the HPC. That's not possible. So I've just generated um, an out 20 LEN request and you basically you can see there is some request which has been created now, right? So there is a, I'm just getting the, there's some request being created. Okay, so let me see here whether we can show something. Okay, so this is where the container instances. So I generated a 20 million request, concurrent request to the, uh, my application. And you can see that, you know, there's a lot of containers being created. Okay, so, uh, you know, it's pretty, uh, you know, fast to get to this level, right? So I, there is no new node created, and there is no much, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, there is no much hassle. So it's just that I've just set up my YAML file into that, you know, to make sure that there is, a, if there is a toleration, if there is some set of uh, request which is coming into your system, you just create more containers using the connectors, and this through these connectors, these pods gets uh, gets instantiated into the containers. So you can uh, use this scenarios for scaling your applications. So and also and these kind of scenarios can be used in your, um, you know, the IoT edge level as well. With, I mean, this is a scaling part without scale part where you can you want to orchestrate the IoT systems and other things. You can use the virtual uh, kubelets. Okay. So this is the system. Uh, this is, was the demo which I wanted to show you. See how exactly it actually you know uh, spins up new containers uh, with the uh, you know, burst which you create onto the system. Okay. So, any questions? Let me know. Yep. So, the, uh, this node, uh, as your node you have added, is it the same way uh, to add the node or it's any different than, you know? Yeah, it's, a, it's the same way when you're creating an uh, Azure um, Kubernetes service. You can, there is a checkbox whether you can, you want a virtual node 
okay. and you can even create a connector for Windows OS or the uh, Linux OS. So if you have a pod which you want to run on Windows, you can set it up. And can you show me that config? Have you have you um, configured that you know label and selector for uh, you know sending the ports on the uh, virtual node? Virtual what was that? Uh, virtual node. You mean to say the uh, selectors for this yeah. node? Yeah. So the, you need to. Uh, it's basically a concept called in while you are setting you are designing these uh, virtual kubelets. Uh, you the providers have to create something called as provider specifications life cycle to manage the life cycles of the pod and that specifications you need to add it into the uh, uh, provider specifications will be there in that you need to create that specifications so i will show you the uh, deployment file if you uh, links so this is the link where you can go you can set up this whole demo in fact and you can also check out the docs if you want to and uh, there you can actually find how exactly you can do this stuff. Yeah. So, um, See, basically, it's used in a different use cases, right? So it's like uh, if you want to scale, the, as I told you, it doesn't do lot of lot of things which virtual kubelet, uh, sorry, which kubelet does, right? So there is a virtual kubelet, and there's a kubelet, right? So kubelet uh, has it manages volumes as well. Some places we don't do that in virtual kubelet. So there is a implementation issues. This is still in version 1.0, and there is a lot of things which is coming up uh, on virtual kubelet itself. This new release was supposed to happen with a lot of things. So it's kind of in development, maybe like. Uh, yes, it's a. It's basically a, uh, It's in a. It's in a development phase, right? It's it's not even graduated as a CNCF project. So it's there, but there's a lot of use cases which is coming out of uh, virtual kubelets. So as I told you, right? It's 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 more like IoT as also one of the thing, and you can you you for if you have a service like order a pizza, you have a service, right? You you can actually use these servers, uh, virtual kubelets with your Kubernetes. And any limitation for scaling? Yeah. Sorry? What's the limit for scaling? There's no limit. So there's, we, do, we have not put a bracket. Uh, I don't think so any provider has put a bracket for this. So you can create as many pods as you want. Okay. Thank you. But at the end of the day, it, it all uses the back uh, CPUs and memories and other stuff, right? So at some point, they will definitely come back and tell you you have to stop growing. <laughs>